Hey guys, it's time to get started again. I don't know about you guys, I kind of got the feeling that you were getting a little bit tired of chemistry, so you're in luck. This new chapter, we're really going to jump into biology, and we're going to learn about cells, which are really one of the fundamental, basic building blocks of all living organisms, our cells. And uh, to celebrate the starting of this new section on cells, I am doing a prezi for you guys on this, so I hope you enjoy it. I really enjoy making them. They're a little more time consuming. Don't expect this every time, uh, but you'll enjoy it too. You'll get to learn how to make these later on in the year, and I think you'll enjoy it. So let's jump in. One of the first major divisions in cells is there's, there's two main types of cells that we want to learn that we're going to learn about. The first one here is what we call a prokaryotic cell. A prokaryotic cell. Now, if we break that word down, this prokaryotic cell. Actually, there's two parts to this word. There's the pro, which actually means before. And the last part here, the karyotic, means nucleus. Okay, so it kind of means before nucleus. So if you'll notice in this picture here, oops, let's control that. If you'll notice in this picture here, there is not a nucleus here. So you'll see there's, there's, they have DNA. They do have DNA, but they don't have nucleus. They have what we call a nucleoid region. And it's just a little area inside them that contains their DNA. But there is no, uh, no DNA. Nucleus. And one of the, and actually the definition of a prokaryotic, by definition of a prokaryotic cell, is this thing here. It says they do not contain membrane-bound organelles such as the nucleus, the mitochondria, or chloroplast, or any other organelles that are found in the body. The organelles that are found in cells, organelles are these tiny little structures that do all the functions of the cell. They all have specific purpose, and you'll learn about these in just a little bit. But uh, but these, these uh, prokaryotic cells, they don't have any of these organelles. So now an example, a classic example of a prokaryotic cell is a bacteria. And of course you're familiar with bacteria as they make you sick, cause you to have infections, and that type of thing. And uh, they're, they're, much, they're smaller than the other type of cell that we're going to learn about. Uh, there are some other, a lot of other differences and we'll kind, of, we'll kind of compare and contrast the two momentarily. So I want to introduce this to you. We'll talk more about prokaryotic cells later on. In, um, the, in your book, it uh, seems like, I'm not sure, maybe chapter 7, 18 or something like that, we'll get into prokaryotic cells. So the other type of cell is this cell called a eukaryotic cell. Now, if you wanted to break the word eukaryotic down, the word eu here, the part of the word the eu actually means true. And then the karyotic here, kary actually means what we just mentioned is nucleus. So that's true nucleus. And if you notice in this picture, they have a nucleus. It's quite visible uh, in a cell. And it's this object right here. This is the nucleus. And uh, let's kind of take a look a little bit closer at these, uh, and compare and contrast the uh, prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Now, if you'll notice here, we already mentioned this, prokaryotic cells, they, have a, they don't have a nucleus. They have a nucleoid region. And the eukaryotic cells have a nucleus. And uh, eukaryotic cells have all the organelles. Of course, we already said this. Prokaryotic cells do not. Prokaryotes, they have a circular DNA, whereas eukaryotes have a linear DNA. Now, the things they do have in common here, it tells you they, do, they are both considered cells. And they both have a cell membrane, which we're going to be talking about here just real shortly. And they both contain ribosomes. Ribosomes are these little, uh, tiny little... Um, we don't really say they're organelles, but these little structures that actually, that's where proteins are made at the ribosomes. We mentioned that in the last uh, sex, last chapter. So anyway, a little bit about the two. And again, examples of a eukaryotic cell, which we're going to we're ready to jump into next, um, are pretty much everything else. It's uh, your plants and your animals and fungus and protists and all those are all eukaryotic cells. The next thing your book talks about is um, that I wanted to mention real briefly is the surface area to volume ratio. Now as a, as, a, as a cell gets bigger, as it increases in size, its volume is going to increase much faster than its surface area. And, um, you can, and then thus it gives there, whenever you, a smaller, the smaller the object here like this, 
has a higher surface area to volume ratio. Now if you'll take a look at these two objects here, okay, and you compare them, they have the same amount of volume in both of them, but if you'll notice this one here has a much higher surface area. And you know that's really beneficial for cells to because this would kind of mimic a cell more so than this because it really causes there to be a much greater efficiency in the the passing or the movement of oxygen, nutrients, or, or waste into and out of the cell. Uh, it allows that to happen much more efficiently, much quicker than if the cell was just this one big, huge, large cell. And it kind of one of the reasons too why when you look at our bodies and we're composed of billions of cells, tiny microscopic cells instead of just a few large, huge, large cells. And um, so that, you know, I just want to touch base with you a little bit about that and uh, familiar, get you a little bit familiar with what that. I, I encourage you to look at that in the book, uh, take a look closer at it. All right, let's jump into this eukaryotic cell. And uh, let's see how I'm doing on time. The uh, first part of the cell we're going to talk about is this thing called a plasma membrane. Sometimes we just refer to it earlier as the cell membrane. You have possibly heard it called something different from the last chapter right here, the phospholipid bilayer. Okay? The, so the plasma membrane is, this, is composed of a phospholipid bilayer. And it basically acts like a selective barrier that, that allows certain things into the cell and certain things out of the cell and uh, that type of thing. So let's take a, look, a closer look at this picture here. And if you'll notice in this picture, you can see the little phospholipids right here. Here's the little phospholipid. There's the little head and the tails. And here's the other layer, the little the head and all the tails. So here you got the one layer and the two layers form the, the bilayer. And... One other feature of, you know, you remember we talked about how the heads are hydrophilic and the tails are hydrophobic. They're actually made of lipids. Now, some other features of this plasma membrane that, sh that we haven't mentioned yet are these proteins. See, here's a protein, here's a protein, and here's a protein. And their job is to primarily allow things into and out of the cell. They're kind of acting as passage waste, and they, we'll learn about those later. They have different, there's different types and you're probably a little bit familiar notice the little cholesterol molecules here remember we talked about in the last chapter their main job is to allow that plasma membrane to stay fluid and this thing actually moves around it's not a static okay it actually will move around and um, these are these other stru structures out here these are part of what we call the extracellular matrix we'll learn about those later on in this chapter so that's a little bit about the plasma membrane the next structure we want to talk about is the big daddy of all, okay? The big daddy, the nucleus, okay? It's kind of like the brain of the cell. Some people kind of refer to it as like the brain of the cell. It's the most obvious, most conspicuous uh, part of a cell. When you look at a cell under a microscope, and we'll look at those later on in the year, especially when we're studying mitosis, you'll see the nucleus, the big nucleus there. And um, the nucleus, its job is to, it's where we find DNA, okay? The, all the, the DNA that you have is found in the nucleus, and, uh, and it's usually in the form of these little objects, these structures called chromosomes. And, of course, you know DNA and chromosomes, they carry all of your genetic information, the blueprints, you might say, of how to make you. And, uh, again, those are all housed inside the nucleus. Now, inside that nucleus is this little darker regions called the nucleolus and inside the nucleolus among other things it, it produces what we call this is actually for stands for ribosomal RNA there's lots of different types of RNA and this particular one ribosomal RNA is, is made in the nucleo, nucleolus and it is forms one of the main building blocks for ribosomes and which we'll learn about here in a little bit but anyway so I want to introduce the nucleus and the nucleolus to you and uh, let's move on to the next. And I encourage you to read about this again in your book to help you understand that a little bit better. The next thing we want to talk about real quick is a ribosome. So uh, I had this little video. Let's see if this thing works for us here. Watch this for a second here. Of course, I'm. Here we go. When the RNA copy is complete, it snakes out into the outer part of the cell. Then
then, in a dazzling display of choreography, all the components of a molecular machine lock together around the RNA to form a miniature factory called a ribosome. It translates the genetic information in the RNA into a string of amino acids that will become a protein. All right, that's far enough on that. I just kind of wanted to kind of show you a little bit about that ribosome. And like the, like the lady said in the, in the uh, video, it's the side of protein synthesis, okay? And um, that's where we will learn a whole lot more about that later on in the year. But uh, I just wanted to introduce that to you a little bit about the ribosome. Now, this will give us a good start on cells. We will continue. There's a whole bunch more that we're going to learn about, a whole bunch more we'll talk about, and we will pick this up in a the next time. See you guys in class.